I came back off of it. So I'm back in the in my arms of sugar. But I mean, it was good. It was definitely some lessons learned. Definitely something that I'm going to do again. I'm just trying to figure if I'm going to do it this month or just do half the month, then do the other half of the month, no sugar. So I'm just deciding. But it was good. Got through it. It was nice. Yes, I ate my Cocoa Pebbles. Did you gain any muscle, lose fat? I mean, basically just lost some fat. Really didn't gain muscle. I mean, no, no, probably lost both, to be honest. But Uh, any positive or negatives you noticed since no sugar December passed? Going back to sugar is definitely uh, uh, I mean, maybe a couple things, but I don't know if it's attributed to the sugar though. Less less stress though, definitely less stress. Thinking about what to eat, not wanting to eat. Like I want to drink some of that, so. When you can just drink it, it just eliminates the, you ain't got to start stressing over it. But when I do go back on No Sugar December, uh, excuse me, I'm probably still going to eat like honey and uh, I think that's it. I think I'm going to just cut out the sodas and stuff. That's like the main thing. Like I was just craving some juice box. And I was like, mm, gotta give me some juice. Lovely. But. <sighs> How do I block this person? How do I block them? I gotta find a way to block this dude. How do I block this dude? Fuck it. I did my best. Um, why take the vaccine if you can't sue them if something goes wrong? Uh, I mean, you can sue them, but, uh, I mean, if that's your excuse why you don't want to take the vaccine, don't take the vaccine. If you're asking genuinely that question, you can get compensation for vaccines. You, that's been, you've been able to do that since 19. You've been able to do that this whole time. There, there's never been a time where you were unable to get compensated if you were injured by a vaccine. That has never happened. It happened before 1986. It's, it happened after 1986. There's people that get payouts from some vaccine complications to this day. You just got to go through the process to do it. So there is a way to compensate, get compensated for the vaccines. But if you want to run with that, as if that, if you want to believe in that lie to not take the vaccine and go ahead. You know, just so we're clear, that's some anti-vax talking point that's not true. If you get injured by a vaccine, you can go, there's a process where you can go get compensated. You go to the vaccine court, you, they'll pay for your lawyer, 
They'll pay for all of your witnesses and scientists and doctors that you bring to show how you got injured. You know, they'll pay you if you win your case. Period. So, again, you ain't got to believe me. I've talked about this mad times um, about this. But if you if if you still don't want to do it, then don't do it. Come on, man. I'm not ignoring you. I didn't even see I didn't even see your question. But I'm not ignoring you. But now I'm not going to ignore you at all. Come on into the live. Come on into the live. What's up, man? I wasn't ignoring you. I didn't see your question, blood. Oh, my bad. A lot of people. Um, let me say this before we start. I'm a big fan, and I learned a lot from your music. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So... So I've been doing a lot of thinking, man. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little nervous because I've been in the uh the chat a long ass time. Okay. But um I wanna know like about globalization and how how it how we can uh benefit from it as a people. As a human I mean there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that go into that that we're not aware of. Okay. Whose fault is that? And there's a lot of Huh? Whose fault is that? That's our own fault because we have access to the internet, but mm -hmm. that's true. Now I can't really, I can't really like say nothing about that part, but I do know that it's outliers though. Outliers exist within the culture. You one of them. You was one of them too. What are you talking about? Like an outlier as one of the people that can see past all the like, all the, the goofy shit, all the, the misinformation. All the shit that really don't help us grow. Mm -hmm. You, I know you was one of the outliers growing up. You seen past that. Yeah. So I'm saying outliers exist within our culture. I feel like I'm one of them. I'm not trying to say that on the uh like as like I'm trying to be like conceited and no goofy shit like that. Right. I'm actually just always learning. Look, let me show you right now. I read this is what I'm reading right now. Uh -huh. Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. Yeah. Look, man, I read all type of stuff, man. I listen, uh -huh. I write, I'm an artist, I'm a, uh, I am create manga, I do all type of stuff. And I, I listen to all your music, too, for years. So I'm not on here trying to say some goofy shit. I'm really trying to understand and absorb all this because the world, the shit we worry about is small as hell compared to the entire world. It's like, it's like 7 billion motherfuckers and it's supposed to increase. I'm like, bro, we, we just one tiny ass fraction of the entire world. Okay. And we were the Okay, you got a you got a you got a specific question. Oh, my bad. Oh, I right, so I'm saying like I right, so you as a hip hop artist, right? Mm. How can other artists benefit from uh globalization or like uh amalgamate their art into the global market? Uh as an artist, the the most direct way is to make your music accessible to people who speak different languages. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, that's what I was saying. Not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but I'm glad you said that because as an artist, I read about um, the griot and like how they used to travel to different countries and they used to uh, teach history or like poetry and stuff like that. That's what a hip hop artist literally is. If you believe in God, like it's almost like universe told you, like, hey, bro, this is what you're supposed to do. The fuck is y'all doing? Right. Y'all been doing the wrong shit the whole time. What the fuck? Look, just learn different languages and speak because music is a language. You can't separate sound from music. It's the same thing. Like, it's the same thing. I'm sorry, but I'm passionate about this. I can't talk to nobody else about it. I'm sorry. You're the only one. Okay. I'm sorry. I hate, I hate. So the, the, the most direct piece, again, like I said, is to make sure that your music is able to be understood by people who speak different languages. So facts and how requ facts require facts requires a process called localization. They do it for video games. They do it for, mute, for movies. It's a little bit harder to do with music, but you can do it if you have uh, music videos and say it's still in English or whatever language mm -hmm. you speak. 
Uh, you can mm -hmm. multiple subtitles for different languages. So people would still be able to understand what's happening, right? But they do it in manga, they do it in anime. So you can take that same localization process and attach it to your music. Or, like subtitles. Or you can literally learn a different language or at least be able to translate what you write in English into another language. Learn that. Then record the that version in different languages where it makes but that th and thirdly uh instead of just focusing on making music where you're talking where you're speaking make music that's just music it's just vibes and feel and make the 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 language part really really short, right and make the more atmospheric music the main focus that's how you connect to different audiences you know so that's how you think of something like right right but reggae, you even though you even though they speak in quote unquote English, you may not be under under be able to understand everything that they're saying, but you're still able to vibe with it because the vibe of it is so strong. And it might be little pieces of things that you understand in it. And there's a place where you can go and translate some of the words that they're using, right, to get a uh, and what's happening. So if you take that approach and look at something like reggae, which is worldwide, right, to a degree, uh, if you take that kind of approach. I think you'll have some success. Cool. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I could. I'm a. I'm a jump. I want. I don't want to be on here all day, and I want to get to a few more people. So. I hope Can you save this live? Can you save the live? Huh? Can you save the live? Yeah, I'll save this live for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, bro. Thanks. All right. All right. Peace. All right. <clears throat> Shout out to the homie. Genre like, I think it was genre, genre like genre. I'll take it. Genre. Okay. All right. Got you. Uh, what do you think about what do you really think about the social media banning of Trump? Um, I mean, at any given time, any given time, any given time in the last four years. And his in, in his response to this uh, to this invasion. At any given time, he could have just did the right thing, meaning that he could have told the truth. He could have condemned the action, right? Yeah, even if them his people, right? If you don't want to condemn the people, I get it. You can condemn the action though, right? You could you could be cordial. I mean, you could be like, the, it's, it's one thing to be an asshole. It's a bunch of people that are assholes on social media. So that's whatever, right? A lot of these people on here are assholes. I don't say a lot, but people on here are definitely assholes. Way more assholes than Trump. Way more disrespectful, way more whatever. Difference being, he's the president. But still, it's not even about not being an asshole. It's about telling the truth, right? Speaking correct facts, like not pushing like conspiracy theories and shit that you know ain't true. Like it's provable, factual, this shit is not true. And instead, he fed it and fed it and fed it and weaponized social media to push his agenda. And I think he forgot that, nigga, you ain't the richest motherfucker and you're not even president no more, right? Like technically you're, I mean, technically you're still president, but you're not the president. Joe Biden's the president now. Your shit's a wrap. You supposed to be packing up your shit, right? So I'm not mad at it. He should have been off Twitter a long time ago. He should have never been on Twitter. Not that deeply, right? He should, like, you're the president. You ain't never seen that. You're the only president who tried to run his presidency on Twitter, like firing niggas and shit like that. Like, Twitter ain't that, that ain't the vibe to fire niggas on Twitter. So 
you know, I think that at a certain point, he should have he should have understood that he was in the public space. And I think that he knew he was in the public space, but I don't think he felt that he had a responsibility um, to keep to, to govern for everyone, not just push bullshit. And that's what he did. And they tapped his ass. And I have no regrets, no second thoughts about none of that shit. If you, if that's a bunch of niggas that I would love to see get kicked clean the fuck off Twitter, um, because they don't, they don't deserve to be there. They're not using it to bring good. I mean, even if you just want to be neutral.